Welcome to Vancouver Carpenter. Today, we are doing a real live level five. So up here, we've got a ceiling with these lights around it. And what those lights do is they cast a really awesome light all the way across the ceiling as soon as all of the uh, lighting around us is done. As soon as the daylight's gone, you can see it perfectly. So we've got another one over here. It's gotta get skimmed out. And then we've got another one in here. And in here, you can really see what it looks like. You can see all the paint roller lines. You can see any screw that needed to be coated more. You can see just every single defect. So all of those look like that at night. So this is the perfect thing for a level five. So what we are going to do is we're going to put two coats of mud over top of this. One coat won't be good enough because there will be a lot of imperfections. So the first coat is going to build it up and the second coat is going to fill in all the little imperfections. Anyways, let's get right to it. So the first thing we need to do is find all of the imperfections that are loose. So like any screw pops, any loose tape, any loose paper, because the last thing I want is to skim out all of the ceiling and have any of the surface be unsound and still be a blister because we'll see that. You'll have a perfect ceiling and then a blister somewhere. And then the whole thing will have to get redone. So what I'm going to do is shine a light right down the ceiling. I don't know if you guys can see that, but we've got a screw pop right here. Is that picking up on camera when I push on it? Okay, great. So I'm gonna circle that so I know where it is. I'm going to keep looking for any of that kind of stuff in this ceiling because that's the kind of stuff we have to fix. There's another one. Anyways, you get the idea. So we've got all the screw pops fixed, almost. I should say prepped. And um, this might seem like overkill, but yeah, what we're doing is we're putting in some extra screws where needed, usually on either side of the existing screw pop. And then I'm carving this out so that that blistered paper can't come back. And normally I wouldn't go to such great lengths, but again, on a skim ceiling, on a level five ceiling, I just don't want to be doing any of this work again. Like. Total failure if you level five the whole thing and then have a bunch of screw pops come back. Anyways. Right now I am just using quick set, 20 minute with a little bit of glue added in to make sure it sticks to these screws. Once that's done, I can get to skimming this thing. A mess. <laughs> that's how you thin your handle back down. now. Oh, it's gonna fall on my mud too. Oh man. Well, this has had a chance to dry overnight. I never did get another coat on this ceiling, but that's not a bad thing. So we filled this with 20 and then I gave it another fill with all purpose real quick. So they're pretty flat. Now I want you guys to take a look at the footage that Nick filmed overnight when all the surrounding daylight is gone and these lights are on and you can see what we're really dealing with here. It is brutal. So what we've got is we've got this edge going all the way around that's been built up and is actually pretty smooth. And then we've got like joints, roller lines, you name it going across these ceilings. So what we're gonna have to do is have a thin coat from about like feathered from nothing out to about an eighth over this whole thing, 16th to an eighth just to be able to hide everything. And then we're gonna need another nice skim coat after a sand. So we'll take some footage every night too, so that we can really see what it looks like. But anyways, I better get to coating this thing. My mud is mixed fairly thick. So it's really smooth, but it's pretty thick. As you can see, it kind of keeps its form after I take a scoop. That's so that it doesn't bubble very much. And also it doesn't shrink. It just goes on real nice and smooth. 
Anyways, time to get to it. So we'll keep it kind of thin right at the edge. And I'm using my 12 inch by five inch trowel. Um, I don't want to use a big trowel on this for two reasons. One, it's just a lot harder on the shoulder to be pushing a big trowel. And two, this is the one that I'm fastest with. I can do the nicest work with it. Um, so we're sticking to the, the smaller trowel. Keep it simple. So right now it's going on real thick. I'm just going to take my time. I don't want to roll it on. That's going to make a horrible mess. Just apply it by hand. Nice even coat. So right now it's pretty thick. I'm going to feather my edge into this little spot. Real carefully. I'm trying not to get mud in here because that's going to be so difficult to sand. Right now, I'm putting pretty firm, even pressure here. And like I've talked about before, I start angled that way and then I go that way for the rest of the passes. And there's going to be lines, there's going to be all kinds of stuff. Right now I'm actually just taking off the bulk of it. And we're going to do one more pass. Again, this one, I'm just going slow and steady. This isn't about speed, this one's about getting it perfect. So that's better. And this pass, there's also a lot less bubbles. I'll get you guys up close once this is done so you can see what my first pass is going to look like. Um, if this was really uneven plaster walls, I would be going thicker, like an eighth to a quarter inch. But this is just drywall and even though it's ugly, it's not that uneven. Okay, let's get that camera up here. Take a close look. So as you guys can see, it's pretty smooth with just some lift offs. It's going to be pretty easy sanding for a first coat. You know, if the lighting was really poor, we could probably get away with one coat. But that lighting is so harsh that it absolutely has to have that second coat to make it perfect. Let's get this set up so we can move better here. This is uh, not the WCB approved way of doing this. This is just how we do it. There we go. So, if you don't have good balance, don't do this. If you have good judgment, don't do that. Wait, if you don't have good judgment, you're going to do it anyways. I guess I just automatically put myself in that camp. Let's do this with a little less talking, so you can just sort of see the pace that it actually happens at. So part of the reason that looks so good from just one coat is because the mud is thick. Like I said, it's a lot more elbow grease and shoulder to move it but it just really is smoother. Get it up as close as I can there, but not too close. Oh, went too far under. It's gonna suck the sand. I'm probably gonna have to get like a piece of sandpaper in there. Can't even get a sponge in there without destroying something else.
guys know what I'm doing. Feather that edge. Okay. Now let's smooth that. Make sure my blade is cleaned off so I don't leave boogers. Oh, that first pass always leaves lines until it's cleaned off. There we go. So this pass is just kind of leveling it out. next pass is going to be to smooth out a lot of the inconsistencies, like the porosity of the mud, basically, also known as the pox. Time lapse or something, eh? Montage. It's gotta be a montage. Even Rocky had a montage. Montage. I'm just doing the final touches of the sanding and uh, got Nick to make me this glorious tool. It is some 180 grit sponge sandpaper um, glued onto this knife so that we can actually get into here properly. And works really well. So now I don't have to worry about getting mud in there because I can actually sand it and do something about it. So that's great. Because I was really worried about that dumb little section there. Almost ready to start coating. Yeah, we're good. Okay, we are ready to start this second coat. Now, one of the things is I'm going to be going in the other direction. So for my first coat, I went this way. And in order to help level it out and really flatten it out, I'm now going to go this way for everyone because it just has a way of like flattening it out nicer. If there was some voids that I missed because of going that way, then they tend to get filled in going the opposite direction. And I also have my mud mixed considerably thinner. So it's definitely filling in, closing in after you take a scoop. Um, you can see it dripping there. It's not super runny, otherwise, you know, makes a mess. But it is still pretty thin. So it is now time to do the second coat.
and it's bubbling like crazy, but I knew it would. I'll get you guys up close to see how glorious that is. Can you see it from down there? Oh, I almost didn't mix this mud thin enough, actually. It's gonna be a bit of a workout, but it'll shrink less and dry faster, but it'll dry overnight no matter what. Best we can in there. Wait, I was gonna show you guys the awesome bubbling. Could you see it? Oh, I hate it. I hate it so much. Okay, the solution to that is to skim it super tight. But we're not leaving much material on here. Because my first coat was pretty darn nice. I can actually afford to skim this really tight. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. And I kind of have to keep going back and forth over it until I see that there's no more bubbles. And so going in both directions can really help to fill those in. So this is a super tight skim. It's a lot of work. This second coat's gonna take a little longer than I wanted it to. But once we get out from the edge, it's not gonna be so bad. So there's not that much to see now. But there's those bubbles that were causing me grief. We're really up close though. There's my hand for reference. We're gonna show you guys one more quick little clip here. Of a nice wide open space. Because this is more what it looks like. When you have a bit of room to play. So I'm actually going back and forth over it real quick because of the bubbling. So a little bit like old school plaster styler. styler. But I'm doing this to sort of work with the bubbles, get them out a little bit faster. When you go in one direction and then push back, it just helps fill them in. So when I go back, for those finished coats, it's going to look a little better. Oh, took that one on the shoulder. Okay. Okay. Now it's ready. And you can see I'm using a lot of angle here. I'm really just taking it all off. And if it wasn't bubbling like this on me, I wouldn't be skimming it so tight. I would leave a little bit of meat on there for sanding, but it's just not giving me that option. So we're leaving it really tight. And it looks glassy smooth, but it will need a sanding. And um, I actually hate this because this is how I destroyed my neck and shoulder. You can see how much I have to push on here to actually get the bubbles out and get it flat. And so it's, what's doing that is the painted surface underneath. 
Um, it's not letting the air and the moisture in, so the moisture and air has nothing to do but come out this side and become bubbles, which means I have to burn out my shoulder in the process. Anyways, I gotta do this over the whole thing. Got the other ceiling to do. Sounds like the coffee's done. Um, but I'm gonna come back and sand it tomorrow. We'll see how it looks. I'm back to sand the second coat. It's starting to get dark around here. I want it to be fully dark so that we can really see what those ceilings are gonna look like. Anyways, let's get in there and check it out. Okay, I just sanded the first small one. It turned out real nice. We're gonna walk in here and turn on the lights. A little more, can they go up more? There we go. That looked weird on camera for a second there. Yeah, you could see everything. That's really gonna make for good sanding. I just wanted to show you guys my method for sanding this. So I've got three quarters of this room sanded. And um, what I do is I just sand in one direction and sand back in the other. So basically I look at where I last started and just slow and steady. Not pushing too hard because that's how you get gouges and scratches. And that light shining on it just enough that I can see it. But I really can't see everything, unfortunately. So I'm gonna do that all the way down to the end and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna go like this really quick. And that just ensures that I really catch everything. And then, even after all that, when we're all said and done, I'm gonna take this light down here. And I'm gonna look for everything. Every little scratch, anything I missed. So far, it's actually really looking good. I'm quite happy with that. This is it. I'm almost there. I'm done. Well, we're gonna have to come back and see how this looks when it's painted. That's it? You don't wanna talk about it? No, I'm gonna... Tell me how you feel? No, I don't wanna. You wanna know how I feel? If anybody in Vancouver is looking for uh, somebody to skim their ceilings, I absolutely will not. <laughs> That's how I'm feeling. <laughs> Well, I wanted to come back and see what this ceiling looks like painted because, um, you know, you can sand it, walk away and say it's good, but you don't really know until you see it painted. So let's turn off these lights and see how it looks. Um, which button is it? Or is it on that side? Middle one. Middle one. And this one? What about these? Yeah, that one. There we go. All right. Okay, let's see how it looks here. You know, it actually looks better in person, but trust me, there's not actually that massive hump there. Or there. That's weird. When I'm looking with my eyes, I can't see that. It's the shadows. But what we were really going for here was trying to get um, just this space right here to have no difference in texture. And I can't even focus on this. You guys might have to take my word that it just looks a lot better. <laughs>
Okay, well, we tried. You know, you really can't see anything on the camera, but it actually looks pretty good. Um, I'm happy with it. You know, there's only one problem, and there's a few scratches. I don't know if we'll even be able to see them on camera, but it was from the sander I was trying to use. Um, I think I was going to do a review of a sander, and I haven't done it yet. But yeah, that's one thing I'm disappointed. There was a few scratches in this ceiling from using that big um, Richard sander that I tried to use, and I couldn't see them because when you sand ceilings a whole bunch, what starts to happen is you get like snow blind, where you actually, you're just staring at white, you've got dust falling in your eyes, and you just can't even see anymore. So there was a bunch of scratches there. Um, they're not so bad as long as you don't like hang out here scrutinizing them. But this one I switched over back to just my foam back sanding pad and this one looked really good. I was happy with this one. Anyways, live and learn. Um, thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. That's how I skimmed this ceiling. Um, it was a big job. I don't even remember. It's been like a month. I haven't edited the video, but I wanted to come back and see it before I did. So, till the next video guys. Thanks for watching.